What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can hide or encode your command line input, for example, for entering passwords when working with Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so in a lot of applications that we're building, we need to have some sort of authentication process. So maybe a simple login screen, maybe a prompt that asks for an API key, for a financial API, for a web scraping API or something like that. Some sort of credentials need to be passed to the script so that the script can work either to provide its own service or to pass these credentials to another service. So to log into an API or uh, into a network, into an account or something like that. And the question is always, how do we provide these credentials? And one way, of course, which is not recommended is to store the credentials, clear text in the script. Another way is to load them from a file, maybe encrypted, maybe not encrypted. Another way is to use the environment variables. But the safest way oftentimes is to just input these things every time you call the script. So for example, I call the script, I provide a username and a password every time I use it. Of course, uh, this gets tedious, I have to do it every time, but it's the safest solution if we don't have a keylogger running in the background because we don't store the password anywhere. Um, and the problem with that is of course that when you enter your password, someone might be standing behind you, uh, or in my case, I might be recording or streaming or something and people see my password while I'm typing it in. So in today's video, I wanna discuss how we can hide these uh, inputs, how we can uh, encode them or not display them the same way that if I say, I hope I can show this right now, if I say sudo uh, and then vi, for example, now it asks for the password for neural nine in this case on Linux. And if I type something, you don't see anything. You just see that if I press enter, this was now the wrong password, so it doesn't work. Um, and this is the same thing that we want to achieve here in Python today. And for that, I'm going to open up the script main.py, so a new script here. And we're going to look at, uh, first of all, the simple example of how to uh, ask the user for the credentials. Probably most of you know this. We just say input and then enter username. And then we can say password is enter password. And then we do something with that. So we can do some uh, a comment here, send info to API or something, whatever you want to do. In our case, we're just going to print a simple message uh, connecting with username, username and password, password like this. So just so we see what the input actually is. Um, and this works like that. I can now run this main PY. And you can see I can enter some username, neural9, for example, and then the password 12345. And of course, you can see connecting with username neural9 and password 12345. So nothing too fancy here. The problem is, as I said, people see this. It's stored in the logs. Uh, it, it can be seen on the screen. Everyone sees it all the time. Uh, it's, it's not good, right? If I have someone standing behind me, I have no... Uh, I cannot use that script without someone behind me seeing what I'm doing. Or maybe I'm streaming, I want to show you the script, I can't do it because I cannot put in my information. Um, how can we counteract that? First of all, there's a core Python way to do it, and then there's a more fancy way by installing a library. And the core Python way is to just import from get pass the function get pass. This is part of the core Python stack, nothing needs to be installed here. And what we can do here now is we can still say username equals input because the username is not uh, problematic, but the password, instead of saying input, we can now say get pass and provide a message. So enter password in our case, and the rest basically stays the same, but now we have a nice effect. If I run this now, I can say the password is neural nine, but when I enter now, uh, the username is neural nine, sorry, in the password, when I enter the password now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you can see nothing on the screen. And if I press enter, you can see that the password was actually passed into the script. Um, and I can do that with something else. So I can just type on my keyboard and you can see that whatever I type is now here, but you don't see anything uh, while I'm typing. And this is great, of course. Now in this case, you see it because I'm printing out the result. Uh, but you don't see it like that. So if I just pass the result to the API, if I pass the input to the API, uh, no one sees anything on the screen. So I can use this for a video, I can use this for a stream, or if I have people behind me, I can also safely input the password. So the more fancy way to do that is by encoding the symbol. So maybe you know this from graphical user interfaces, uh, you basically have a text box and you can specify that this is a password text box. I think in HTML, uh, you can you can say input type password as far as I know. 
and then it encodes the individual characters. And you can do something similar in the command line, uh, live while typing, but this requires um, an additional library. So what you have to do is you have to type pip3 on Linux or just pip on Windows, pip3 install, uh, and the library is called getch. So get ch for get character, get char. Um, and in my case, this is already installed. And then I can go ahead and say main py and uh, let's delete this here. What we do is we say import getch. And then what I do is I say I define a function encoded input, then also a message so that we can use it the same way we use input. And then I just print the message here um, without a line break in the end. And all I have to do now is I have to say, okay, password is an empty string. And while true, now, you can also do something like while not done and stuff like that, but we're just going to use a while true now and we're going to break out of it, which is not the cleanest way to do programming, but we're going to still do it uh, in this video here. And we're going to say now that the next symbol is getch dot getch. So we're going to get the character, which is the next symbol. And we're going to say, okay, if that symbol is equal to backslash n, which is a line break, or if the symbol is uh, equal to backslash r, which is essentially also kind of a line break, we're just going to break out of the loop. So now the password was, um, was entered, this is the commitment uh, key, and um, we're going to break out of the loop. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to print here, uh, the symbol that we want to use for encoding in this case, an asterisk, uh, asterisk, so a star symbol, and we're going to say the end is nothing, we're going to say here, flush is equal to true. And then we're going to say, the password is going to be whatever the symbol is. And in the end, we're going to just print an empty line and we're going to return the password. So what we're doing is we're getting the character that is typed, we're saving it into symbol, we're not printing it out onto the screen, uh, we're not printing anything, we're not showing the character. Uh, instead, we're printing a star every time or this, this symbol here that we provide every time that we type something. Uh, every time getch is triggered. So because we get an endless loop and here it pauses until we press a key. And if that key is not a line break, we basically just print another symbol. And we add to the password the actual key, the actual symbol that was typed, and then we return the password. So what I can do now is I can just say encoded input, enter password, and now it works the exact same way. But you will see an interesting effect even on Linux. This also works on Windows. Uh, Python three main py. And now I can say, okay, neural nine is the username. And now I can. Um, okay, there you go. Now I can type um, a password. So let me just see there was a problem here. Uh, username input, why didn't it show that immediately? Enter password. I'm not sure about this if this was a bug or not. But if I say neural nine, enter. Okay, I need to press a key to see the next um, the next character. I'm not sure why exactly that is the case because I don't think that it was the case. However, I can do something like hello world now and you can see hello world is the password and you can see that it's encoded while I'm typing. So it's still uh, hidden from, from someone standing behind me, from someone watching this video, um, but it actually processes the input. So this is a fancy way to do it. You don't have to do it like that. Probably the professional way uh, is to not overdo it with an external library to just uh, define a function so that you have a fancy encoding. The best way is probably to use get pass, just don't display anything also because people then don't see how long your password is. Because if you know that my password is eight uh, characters long, you don't have to brute force anything that is longer or anything that has one to seven characters, right? Um, so the best way is probably to use get pass, but this is a fancy way that you can also use. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.